do what we do. You ready? Dieter, did you uh did you unmute your headphones so you can hear this? Because we're going to move into my favorite segment of reason. Hypocrite of the week! Woo! This week's hypocrite of the week is going to a New York City police officer who was also a pastor who has allegedly had sex with a 16-year-old that he met at his church. So I'm going to do a little screen share here. We'll show this meme that I made because the video was not working, so we're not going to have that, but we will have this little meme, and I'm going to read you a little bit about this and why I thought it was relevant, um, primarily because they're doing a lot of victim shaming on this. Um, a lot of people of the church have came out. A lot of people in the community have came out in support of this guy, and they have been shaming the victim. So you can check out the meme there. I'll go ahead and read a little bit from this article. So the assistant district attorney had this to say. He abused two positions of authority, both public and vestal, and Sosa's colleagues at the church had a hard time believing the allegations. It's not true, said one of the church's founders, Fernando Gonzalez. It's being made up. Vladimir might have been trying to help the female in question with her spiritual life, he added, saying that he always trusted his colleague with his own three daughters. It might have happened that because of her age, she confused the situation. However, the family of the girl says it's the other way around. She's doing very bad. She used to be a top student, a virgin, a girl that was in love with God, and this man seduced her, a family friend who knows Sosa said. She is crying, very depressed. I can say uh, that he destroyed her life. The relationship was discovered uh, after the good. teen's mother found disturbing texts on her phone. The girl admitted to the relationship, at which point her mother went to the police. So at this time, he's still denying all of the allegations, uh, and they are continue to victim blame and victim shame here in this situation for claiming that maybe he was trying to help her with spiritual matters but for some reason I don't think sticking your dick in a 16 year old has to do with anything with spiritual matters but that's just me okay so 16 year old is one of those really like murky areas where it's like getting close to being a legal age for those sort of activities to be okay. But at the same time, this guy's significantly older. He's in a position of authority. So it really doesn't make any sense that she could have seduced him. And even if she did, like even if she was a seductress, a seductress, that word mastermind. She's still underage, and he's an adult. He should know damn better. So, there's no way where he's not at fault in this situation. So this is just bullshit. Oh, yeah. yeah uh, no, go ahead, G. Okay, well, uh, I, I was just going to say that, yeah, this is totally ridiculous for them to be like, oh, no, he didn't, he didn't, he was just trying to give her some spiritual kind of like nine-inch kind. <laughs> I mean, seriously, how how can how can you mistake that? How can you misread that? I mean, oh yeah, how's my spiritual guidance? Uh, you know, come by next week, and I'm sure that we'll get about three of them in. I mean, I I really don't understand these religious people that that that, that try to victim shame people because th this isn't just only a problem in in that particular sense, but like if you just look at Christian colleges. They are regularly victim shaming uh, 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 sexual abuse victims, rape victims, and and it, you know it, it, of course it's not just Christian colleges. It, it's a it's a it's a it's a thing that affects all colleges. But I mean, for a Christian college to do it is particularly douchebagging. I mean, I, I mean, because they, because they're not just saying, "Oh, it's your fault. You misread the situation." They're saying, "Oh no, you caused this to happen. Some kind of sin in your life has caused no. you to be." Raped. What does that mean? Like, gee, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but what the hell does that mean? Like, she misread the situation, and then her clothes exploded off of her body with such force that they ricocheted 
making his penis enter her repeatedly? Like, what does misreading the, rep- the situation yeah. mean? Well, I think... Well, I, I think what, what it's getting at here, at least with the whole misreading of the situation, is that they are trying to place the blame on the victim and saying, well, you just misread it, and therefore it's your fault because you made it happen. When it, it, Like you said before, it really is just the pastor or this douchebag's um, job, basically as an adult, not to do that. I mean... And and by misreading the situation, I think they're trying to put it in the light of you know these uh, rape allegations that happen where the girl has just like buyer's remorse, I guess, basically, and tries to go back on it. Well, <coughs> I, I think that's what they're I, trying to do. It's a, the question I kind of have. <laughs> it, it sounds like she wasn't raped <laughs> in the traditional sense, like it's statutory rape by definition. But it sounds like they actually had a relationship going, which I guess isn't, I guess it's better, but it's still kind of a terrible situation to be in because the girl still could have been coerced in a variety of ways because evidently she wasn't enjoying herself and it kind of went south really quickly. So, well, you know, I, also... I, said, I mean, this is why I said initially the 16-year-old age is a really difficult age like, in general, obviously, but also because you're mentally aware enough of what's going on, but hormonally enough to not have any idea what's going on. You're not legal most places, but then other countries you're legal. It gets really bad legally and psychologically in that particular age range. And because of that, she might have gone into this relationship actually willingly, but then it just immediately went horrible, and... Again, it doesn't even matter because it's still the guy's fault completely because of the age difference. Right, even age if age she went into the, the relationship the willingly, there there's a reason why when you it, go it's, seek legal it's advice... Willingly. You have, it's willingly. Yeah, it, it, even if she did that, there's a reason why when you go seek legal advice, you sign into a contract, usually with your, your counsel, that you're not going to have a relationship with them. Or when you go see a psychiatrist, you know, you, you're forbidden from having a sexual relationship with these people, or, or you can lose your licensure simply because these people are vulnerable and they're opening themselves up to you, and if you take advantage of that in a position of power, then basically you're preying upon people that are vulnerable. And him being a police officer and a pastor just doubled up on it. So it doesn't matter if it was a willingly, it doesn't matter if it was a relationship. He's 100% still in the wrong. And even I would err on the side of caution, which says that her hormones were just crazy. And even if she did, like, come at him, it still should have been um, his responsibility as a pastor, as a person that's supposed to be setting the moral precedent and supposed to be upholding this view that these church members have of him, he's above reproach. He can do no wrong. He should be upholding that. And so he gets 100% of the fault from me. No, I completely agree. Don't get me wrong. It's I'm trying to kind of put the, I guess, best spin on the story. But at the same time, there's really no positive way for this to go down. I really feel bad for this girl. I hope she does get help. Well, yeah, and, you know, I mean, he was a pastor, so, I mean, he pretty much has expert training in, in brainwashing and, and, and you know, getting, in getting people to do what he wants. I mean, <clears throat> just, just uh, I mean, because that's the whole, or at least in my view, that's kind of one of the whole basis of, uh, 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 of Christianity is being able to control people. It's, it's, a, it's a control method or control tool, basically. And and so, I mean, w- with him being in that position, having that experience, and, and then using that on a child, <clears throat> I, I would agree that it's kind of a shady area at 16, but it's only a shady area within a certain age range. He's obviously outside that age range, and he should obviously know better. Like, even if, if she, you know, came at him naked, you know, he should be like, nope, call on your parents, get back in that room, lock the door. I don't yeah. care if she was... Oh, I'm sorry. I just I don't care if she... 
I don't care if she was 18. He took advantage of a situation. He's supposed to be a leader. He's supposed to be her pastor, a police officer. He's supposed to take care of her because he's in that position. So I don't care. I do agree that 16 is a shady area. I've said that many times, but him being in the position that he's in, she, you know, if she comes to him for advice, he took advantage of the situation. Bottom line, he's an asshole. He needs his ass whipped. I know y'all don't believe in corporal punishment, but I would whip his ass. Yeah, that's the thing with the 16-year-old um, age is that uh, I'm actually of the opinion that we should allow for exemptions to statutory rape within reason, you know, like a two- to three-year age gap. So if a, a person is 16 years there old and, is, the, uh, and the, the quote-unquote offender is 18 or 19 and they're in a relationship, um, I say that we don't need to label that person as a sex offender and all that. That's just kind of going overboard. That's not really what we're intending there. You know, personally speaking from experience, when um, I met my now wife, she was 15. I was 17 going on 18. And so as we progressed through our relationship, you know, we were, you know, she went 15, 16. I was 17, 18, 19, you know, so and she was still under 18. So, um, you know, and obviously we went on, we continued dating, we got married. So if, you know, for somebody would have put me uh, as, a, as a sex offender or something would be completely ridiculous. Um, but obviously in this case, that was not the, the case at all. Um, and even if it, you know, just just the fact, even if this girl was say 18, the fact that this guy has the uh, position of authority of being both a police officer and, um, you know, spiritual minister, guidance, pastor, whatever you want to call it, uh, he has that position of trust and authority over um, young people, and he abused that. Uh, you know, there are like high school teachers who have had relationships with 18-year-old students. And they've been um, at least disciplined by the school, fired, what have you, if not criminally charged, because um, you know it's just it's an abuse of power. You have that that power over them. So even if it's not necessarily illegal, you're still kind of coercing them to an extent. You know, it, it could be completely consensual, but at the same time, uh, you know, just that very fact alone is enough to make it that um, there's something wrong going on there. And, and obviously, in this situation. Uh, the age gap was much larger, and he had, you know, that dual position of authority. So he's completely in the wrong. And to try to blame the victim at all in this case is completely unwarranted, in my opinion. Agreed. Those kind of rules actually do exist in a lot of places, where it's like specifically in the situation you're describing. But even then, it's a lot of times a case by case basis. There's a very short of uh, age range, and obviously this is completely outside of that. That's why 16 is just such a crappy age for, like, when legality comes in. Like, I think it's, like, like 16 to 19. Laws are weird. And but I mean, there are some states this, like, uh... Um, yeah, there, there are some states where they, they factor in that, and they give you the option to do case-by-case -case things. But even in his situation... Um, how do you how do you obtain a relationship with a sixteen year old? As how old is he? He's at least thirty, I was guessing. I didn't I don't rec recall seeing it. But how do you get, engage in a relationship with a sixteen year old? You must be preying on them or abusing some position of power. It's not like you just met her over at the gym or something. It's like, hey, what's up, ma? Hey, how you doing? No. <laughs> So anyway, before yeah. we stamp him with hypocrite of the week, let me go ahead and say that this this victim blaming is horrible. And um, obviously she was affected by it. If her grades are dropping and all these things are happening, her parents were wondering what was happening. So they took her phone and then they discovered these text messages between her and the pastor. Now, this to me, is the epitome of where we're failing at in a society. When we shame and blame someone for coming out and saying that something happened to them, we automatically default on the side of the person who's in the position of power. And not saying we as we here at the Reason Panel, but we as a society generally will fault upon the person that we trust the most. In this situation, he actually happens to be a police officer as well and he's protecting the community and so they probably have this really really high standard for this guy just because he's the pastor and the police officer like the double whammy and so they're they're engaging in this shaming and victim blaming and it's wrong all of the time it's there's no 
um, situation where ever blaming the victim is right, especially in a situation where the other person had opportunities to not make them a victim, like he did. G, you had something you wanted to say before I give him the official stamp? Uh, yes, uh, I would like to make a prediction real quick, um, and I would like to say that this guy is probably going to get forgiven by his congregation. He's going to get forgiven by his, uh, you know, the people around him. They're going to say, well, you know, he fell short of the glory of God and all this other stuff, and he's going to be accepted back in to pray on more young girls. And that goes into something that I feel very deeply about, feel very passionately about, is that the forgiveness aspect of Christianity, while some people think that it's very positive in it, I think that it's actually very detrimental because it allows things like this to slip by without any kind of criticism, without any kind of critical thought. And it allows them to get back into the habit of, of, of preying on more, on more children. So I, I, th th that's all I had to say. All right, so for taking advantage of two positions of power, being a police officer and a pastor of a church, and preying upon a 16-year-old that you met at church, and saying that you were spiritually guiding her and defending these actions, even though they have evidence to show that you were engaged in some kind of uh, unprofessional relationship with this girl, we're going to stamp you with Hypocrite of the Week. Dieter, get out the mallet. Give him the official stamp. Yes. Also, I want to stamp his congregation. Can we can we give another stamp, Dieter? Can we stamp his congregation? Yeah, because that's absolutely horrible, and we here at the Reason Panel are not in support of shaming, especially victim shaming. 